Why do you think gold was reclassified tier one? But I want people to understand that this is being done methodically and they're doing things in a very methodical fashion that when they do say, hey, folks, we're done, dollars done, thanks for the memories, that they have all of their bases covered. And I think 2024 will be just that, more and more reinforcing of a growing group of countries that represents the majority of humanity. Let's start with uh, recapping 2023 a little bit, Andy. I called it a bit of a prelude to what is about to happen this year. Um, l- l- let's start with that. What were some of the most important you know, trends you've seen last year, or trends, events, that sort of impacted what you, what you're looking at uh, that might path the way for a t- tumultuous 2024 here. Well, you know, I I've my main focus for the last three four years has been on this growing coalition of countries, the BRICS, um, that are gaining legitimacy, gaining credibility, um, gaining critical mass, um, gaining mass adoption. And in 2023, we saw the admittance, which just went full uh, effect here yesterday, of uh, Iran and Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates and Ethiopia uh, and Egypt. And, you know, th- this 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 is a big deal as far as I'm concerned. This is a very, very big deal. I think the end of the U.S. hegemony is over the entire world is becoming obvious. I think that's kind of one of the main trends that I saw in in 2023 and you know I think I would cap it off by saying maybe the biggest tr- the biggest event that I saw in 2023 that that really puts an exclamation point on the BRICS and you know we can talk about the fact that there's another 16 countries that have already formally applied another 20 plus countries uh that have expressed interest. You're talking 40 countries in all, and if not more, a massive growing coalition. But, you know, I've talked a lot about Saudi Arabia. I focused on Saudi Arabia for several years now. I think that's kind of what's got me noticed in this industry because I was talking about this stuff before everyone was in 2019, 2020, and all the almost 1,400 YouTube videos I've done, every one of them talks about the BRICS going back that far. And I've often talked about Saudi Arabia as being the linchpin of all of this. And I, I would say, look, you know, they 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 joined the Belt Road Initiative along with every other OPEC country in the world. That's 75% of human population right now, 50% of global GDP right now, uh, a growing, growing group uh, of countries that are, are uniting together. The West isn't part of it. I talked about how they applied for and have been admitted to uh, formally uh, into the BRICS. Huge deal, right? That Yeah, big deal. I talked about how they joined the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. This is another big deal that isn't talked about enough, which I think people need to focus on the fact that the SCO is the largest regional financial and military organization on the planet. You know, you can't make these provocative moves against the West. Um, you know, uh, Gaddafi and, and um, Saddam Hussein showed that to be true. Um, unless you got your your six covered, your rear end. And I think it's easy to say that when Saudi Arabia uh, applied to these groups, you know, the the realization that they're being protected, perhaps, by two of the three largest nuclear arsenals on the planet is certainly something to think about. I talked about how they joined the BRICS New Development Bank. This is all, a lot of this in 2023 happened. Not all of it, but a lot. And that was a big deal, obviously, because this is like the World Bank. It is the engine of finance and growth for this new regime. And and I want people to understand that, you know, this is something that I see coming. It's not something that's going to happen immediately until it does. It's the logarithmic decay theory. Little by little by little by little by little and bang, all at once. When is the all at once? I don't know. Brent Johnson and his milkshake theory is very astute. He's been right, and he will be right until he's not. And I, I've been, I don't want to say wrong. I think I have been right, and I'm phrasing it the right way, that ultimately and inevitably these things are going to happen. And I'm getting somewhere with this guy. I'm sorry I'm dragging it out, but I want to lay the foundation. And look, I think I will be right. I think I have been right. I'm not expecting tomorrow to be the end of the U.S. dollar. But there will come a time when the 500-year um, dominance of the West 
and the hegemony and the the sanctions and the coercion and the bullying and doing things in a not in a cooperative manner will have run its course. The mismanagement of the world reserve currency will have run its course. All of these things in time will have run its course. So this is one of the things that I focus on, this little by little by little by little, then bang all at once, this logarithmic decay. So all of these things that have led up to this point have been really, really, in my opinion, very important. Now we see Saudi Arabia in Davos in 2023 tell the folks at the World Bank meeting that, yeah, we're we're interested in listening to other currencies talk about paying, other countries talk about paying for oil and other currencies. Remember, it is the backing of, of, of the petrodollar, the, 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 the fact that Saudi Arabia and OPEC have valued oil in dollars for 50 years, that has given the dollar its petrodollar status, the given us the world reserve status. And there was a comment made in 2023 that was incredibly provocative, not the most provocative thing, which is coming, I'll talk about in a second. But look, China, uh, Saudi Arabia said, look, China is our most important uh, partner in oil sales this year and for the next 50 well, that's a big statement, right? It's been 50 years that we've been protecting the Saudi kingdom and had this privilege. And I think when you talk about the meaning of words and the significance of them, there's a lot to to, to unpack in that statement alone. And I don't think it, the, I think it, it, there, there was symbolism in what he was saying. It, it, there's no joke in what he was saying. And it's foretelling the future of the dollar and, and its relationship to oil sales globally. But to me, the biggest event happened just a few weeks ago. And it's interesting. You can't really find it. MSN came out with an article and talked about it. Uh, you can find it if you look hard enough. But here's the deal. So Saudi Arabia doing all of these things has been my main focus, right? And And certainly, I think ultimately there will come a day when Saudi Arabia and the rest of OPEC say to the West, listen, you guys have signed an executive order to go green. We respect that. We appreciate all you've done for us. But we're now joining with a, a growing coalition of countries that represents the majority of humanity who doesn't have aspirations of going green. And so we're going to hitch our wagon in a different manner. But thanks for the memories. And that's when it becomes a religious experience in this country as the world dumps dollars because they don't need to stockpile them this synthetic demand that has been created for 50 years to buy oil is no longer necessary. And the byproduct of that massive uh, overwhelming of dollars hitting our shores is massively spiked interest rates. And all of the inverse correlation to the asset prices in this country becomes a very, very, very big problem very quickly. Not to mention the banks, which cannot handle interest rates spiking to that magnitude. It's the great reset, right? You, we, you and I were talking offline and a lot of people are saying this is the year of the Great Reset. Well, whenever that happens, there's your Great Reset, and there's your villain to point to, Xi Jinping and Putin and OPEC. They did it to us, right? But that's that's neither here nor there. To me, the big one was this story that came out just a couple of weeks ago. United Arab Emirates hosted a, um, a summit in Dubai, um, 200 countries uh, for the United Nations uh, on climate change. Interestingly enough, it was presided over by the chief of the state-owned United Arab Emirates Oil Company, who told the ex-president of uh, Ireland, you know, just so you know, if we go this way, if we go completely green away from fossil fuels, you'll send civilization back to the caves. So you can understand where they're coming from. Now, look, they are the seventh largest producer of oil in the world, uh, United Arab Emirates. They were just admitted and formally accepted into the BRICS alongside of Saudi Arabia. They are a OPEC-producing country. Two days, two days before 200 countries from around the world come to Dubai for this summit, United Arab Emirates announces we do not want to take dollars for oil anymore. Now, that is a very, very, very big shot to cross the bow uh, of the Western hegemony. And what's even more interesting to me is that the soon as the summit ends, and I think the timing of this is no coincidence, you make this announcement right before 200 countries come to your to, to Dubai to talk about climate change. Um, and right when the summit ends, you get Putin, who hasn't left the country but twice because of, in the last two years because of the Western bounty on his head, decides to fly in an impromptu meeting to the United Arab Emirates, flanked by four MiG fighter jets. 
what were they discussing? Do you think it had anything to do with uh, that statement, just like Gaddafi and, and Hussein, you know, made that statement and then were quickly um, invaded and the regimes toppled? Do you think it had anything to do? I don't know. Maybe it did. I'm not sure. And then he goes directly to Saudi Arabia, where the day after he leaves, OPEC announces an increase to 2 million barrels of oil per day that will be decreased. So de uh, increasing the decrease uh, of 2 million barrels per day. What you are seeing are these countries forming alliances. Uh, they are so, um, they are taking the place of the, the Western alliances. So to me, maybe the biggest development of 2023 was the United Arab Emirates making this announcement in a manner that, that has been largely ignored by the West.